I think we can all agree on one thing. A good mood requires good food. A few cakes, pastries, or ice cream should do the trick. But if we try to create these dishes back at home, they almost always lack in taste or in appearance. But why is it so? Is it because we did not use good ingredients? Or is it because you and I are just terrible cooks? Or is it because we are missing some secret ingredient, something that has the magic to bind everything else together? So what is this secret ingredient I'm talking about? The secret ingredient is none other than tacit knowledge. But before we embark on this journey to understand what tacit knowledge is, it might be better if I talk about something else. It has been said that we humans share a common thirst for knowledge. Right from the primitive days up until now, we are always trying to understand something new, something that we still do not understand. And this knowledge, puts, this quest for knowledge puts forth an important question. What is the best way to acquire this knowledge that we seek? Now, most people answer this in fairly predictable ways. One may say, read a book, while another may say, Google it. Google knows everything. And while this form of transfer is real, has its own advantages, it has an inherent flaw. There are some things to learn which you cannot learn in this way. For example, learning to ride a bicycle is much more easier to learn by observing somebody ride a bicycle and then experimenting rather than reading a book about bike paths and the physics of bike movement. The same applies for learning a language or kneading dough. Why? It even applies to something as simple as hammering a nail into the wall. And I can assure you, if you try to learn this skill by reading a book, you are going to end up with both thumbs smashed. So now, what do all of these skills have in common? All these skills require tacit knowledge, the intuitive, experience-based wisdom that you can only get from someone in the know. It was Michael Polanyi in 1958, in his magnum opus, Personal Knowledge, who coined this wonderful term. It was his belief that we know more than we can tell. Now, all of you who love definitions, tacit knowledge can be defined as the skills, the ideas, and the experiences that a person possesses, but finds difficult to express in the form of words or in speech. I have a question for you. Would you be able to teach somebody to throw a basketball through the hoop just using words? I'm pretty sure you can't. You may be able to tell him where to stand, how to, how to throw the ball, but you cannot teach him exactly and make him perfect the skill. That can only be done with practice. Another thing, you cannot teach him the perfect power or the perfect amount of the perfect amount of pressure or the angle that you need to set to be able to throw the ball into the hoop. Now that brings me to the next thing. Now that we have a fair understanding as to what tacit knowledge may be, let us move on to understanding why it is important. T tacit knowledge has a few proven benefits. It improves the accuracy of one's work and also improves the quality. But that's not it. Did you know that up to 80% of all the knowledge that we possess in tacit form, only 20% of the valuable knowledge that we possess is in an explicit form and can be easily expressed. That is why we have practical learning. Because when we learn only through words and speech, the teachers are able to pass on only 20% of all the knowledge that they possess. By observing them, we can gain even more knowledge. It is exactly like an iceberg. From outside, only the tip is visible, but there's a lot more hidden underneath. Tacit knowledge has another strength. It is really difficult for competitors to imitate. And hence, one who possesses tacit knowledge stands to gain a competitive advantage. Let me give you an example. Sir Henry Bessemer invented the advanced steel making process, and he sold this patent to five steel producers. But some of them sued him back because they were not able to get this process to work, and they felt that he had cheated them. But the truth was that they only possessed the ex 
ex the explicit knowledge to get this to work. They did not possess the tacit knowledge. This, this also brings into light another fact. While science is about knowing why, and social networking is about knowing who, tacit knowledge is about knowing how. So Sir Henry Bessemer himself set up a steel company, and this steel company became one of the largest in the world, and changed the whole face of steel making. Now imagine an organization where somebody has been working for a long time. He has gained a lot of experience over these years in the form of tacit knowledge. But once he leaves, if he does not share this tacit knowledge, it gets lost within himself, destroyed forever. And that brings us to the last part of this discussion. How do we share tacit knowledge? According to research, the easiest way to spread tacit knowledge is through face-to-face -face interaction. And that is why we need to talk to the tacit knowledge keepers in our group. They are usually the most experienced and the oldest. We also need to arrange for opportunities to observe these individuals and apprentice with them. Let me give an example. In 1985, Machu Shita were working on the automatic bread-making machine, but this hit an early snag. They were not able to get the bread to knead properly, and often the bread was burned on the sides. So Ikuko Tanaka, one of the software engineers, volunteered at the Osaka International Hotel, which was reputed to make the best bread in the region. So during this apprenticeship, one day she noticed that the head baker not just kneaded the dough, but also twisted and stretched it during the same time. And this was a secret to make good bread. So coming back to Matsushita, the, the software engineers worked for one full year and they were able to get this twisting stretch into the prototype. So now, another easy way, but often overlooked method of transferring tacit knowledge is using metaphors. We have all read the Panchatantras and the Aesop's fables when we were young. But over years, we forget. We think of them as mere stories, but they hide behind them huge storage of wisdom. We too can use metaphors and allegories to spread tacit knowledge. We need to move beyond this two-dimensional transfer of explicit knowledge and increase the amount of meaningful conversation amongst our groups. We need, to, we need to focus more on knowledge rather than data and information, and only then are we focusing on the future rather than the past. Thank you.